All right, this is the video for decimal and fraction grids, the home connection with today's unit. Um, for each question, fill in the missing decimal or fraction equivalent or shade the grid to match the numbers given, very similar to the last page that we did. I'm going to look at number one here, and I could sit and count them all, but I can also imagine that I'm going to move this piece right here and this piece right here, and then I can tell that this is half of this um, hundred that is colored in. So my decimal is going to be five tenths or 50 hundredths. Either way works just fine. I could say five tenths or 50 hundredths or one half for my fraction equivalent as well. On number two, you're probably going to have to count how many hundredths are colored in and figure that one out. Let's go down to number three. Here you have the same decimal as number one, so figure out a different way to shade that in. And then your fraction equivalents are going to be the same, so that makes that one easy. Let's look at number four. It says 70 hundredths. I know that 70 hundredths is also 7 tenths, so I'm going to color in or shade in 7 tenths. That's four, five, six, seven. So my decimal equivalent could be 70 hundredths or seven tenths. Looking at number five, we're supposed to use the symbols less than, greater than, or equal to to compare each pair of decimal numbers. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you on that, make it a little easier to read. Both of these, are six, right? Six and zero tenths, six and zero hundredths, those are equal. So I'm gonna give them an equal sign. On B, we have five and 514 thousandths, and five and 541 thousandths. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the ones and compare the ones. Are they the same? Yes. Then I'm gonna to go to the tenths and compare the tenths. Are they the same? Yes. Then I'll go to the hundredths. Are they the same? No, this one is bigger, so that means that this number is greater. And I'm gonna do the same thing for all of the rest of these. Let's look at D. The tens, there's a number in the tens place on both, they're the same. The ones are the same. The tenths are the same. The hundredths, oh, this one is bigger, so that means that that number is greater. So you do C and E on your own. On number six, round each decimal to the nearest one, tenth, and hundredth. Hint, look at the digit to the right of the place to which you're rounding. If it's less than five, round down. If it's five or more, round up. Like I said in class, five or more, raise the score. Four or less, let it rest. Five or... Um, I can't remember what the other rhyme is, but that's one rhyme to help you do it. So let's look at A. We're supposed to raise to the nearest one here. So I have to look at the tenths place. Is this five or more? No, it's four or less, so we're going to let it rest. So it's zero and zero tenths to the nearest tenth. Okay, so if I'm going to do it to the tenth, now I need to look at the hundredths, hundredths place. It's still four or less, so it's still zero. To the nearest hundredth, now I need to look at the thousandths place. Oh, that's five or more, so I'm going to raise the score, but I only raise it to the tenths place, or to the hundredths place, I'm sorry. So it's going to become five hundredths. I don't do anything with the ones or the tenths. Let's do another one to figure that out. So 14 and 964 thousandths, I'm looking at the tenths place. It's five or more, so I raise the score on the ones, and it becomes 15, okay? Nearest tenth, so I look at the hundredths place. It's five or more, so I raise the score. Now, this one gets a little tricky because if I add one to the nine, if I give, give it a shove, five or above, give it a shove, it becomes 10, which then means I have to make the ones place 5. 
So that's kind of they're being tricky on that one. When I look to the nearest hundredth, here I have four or less. So I let it rest and it becomes 14 and 96 hundredths. Okay, you go ahead and do the rest of those. There aren't any more here with that nine situation. So that should help make it easier. Complete the table below to show each fraction as a decimal and each decimal as a fraction. Three fourths I know is the same as 75 cents. So that's what I'm gonna put as my decimal. Two 20 hundredths could be written 20 hundredths or two tenths. Either one is just fine. You can do three hundredths, 72 hundredths, just like money, 72 cents. Think about it that way, and six tenths yourself. In the challenge, Riley collected rain for several weeks in a rain gauge. He collected one and 48 hundredths inches the first week, half that much the second week, and one inch the third week. How much more rain will Riley need to collect before he has five inches? So what we need to do is figure out how much he, he got the second week, first of all, because we've got one and 48 hundredths the first week, and the third week he got one inch. Now we need to figure out what goes in the middle. So I have to divide one and 48 hundredths by two. Now if you don't know how to do long division, just think about it cutting it in half, but I'm gonna write it out long division style. Two goes into one, it can't. So two goes into 14, seven times. Seven times two is 14. I subtract and I get nothing. So I bring down my eight. Two goes into eight, four times. Four times two is eight. And there's my answer. And then I have to put my decimal up here. So, now I need to add this all up. Eight plus four plus zero is 12, carry my one. Seven plus four is 11, 12 plus zero, 12, carry my one. One plus one plus one is three. Now they want to know how much more rain he needs to collect before he has five inches. So I have to subtract this from five inches to find out the difference. I can't. Uh, subtract that, so I need to borrow. 10 minus 2 is 8, 9 minus 2 is 7, 4 minus 3 is 1 inches. 1 and 78 hundredths inches more. All right, if you still have questions on some of those that I left blank, please feel free to ask and have a good one.